Hi guys, welcome to Learn Electronics Repair. I have a laptop here, this belongs to a friend, actually. Aspire 8735G, this belongs to Ollie from um, Red Nazot, another YouTube channel, another local YouTuber, yeah. So, he says the problem with this is that it crashes effectively after 20 minutes or so. You can restart it or run for 20 minutes or so and crash again. So I've booted this from a USB. There was no hard drive in the laptop when he brought it to me. So he has now given me another 500 gig. So from what I can see, I can leave this machine sitting here running. Booted from my USB and it's just fine. Doesn't seem to have any problems. I mean, we can leave that there for quite some time. It's been on now for quite some time and it's just okay. I'm sure you can't see that very well because of all the reflections on the screen, but it's probably the only way I can actually show you what's happening with this machine. So let's just install Windows 10 and see what it does. And it's running, it's doing stuff. Okay. So it's copied the files to RAM, I think. Let's see what happens now. Okay, loading files. Starting the installation. So far it goes. Well, oh, the screen flashed. I think it's crashed. Yeah. And then it reboots. So I'm going to try the same thing again now, straight away. So you would think it would crash quicker because it's already warm if it's overheating, basically. Let's go. Yeah, back to here. Now this Windows USB, I use this when I'm testing all sorts of hardware. It's just the one I use for testing, so I've used it on many, many machines. Haven't had a problem with it before, so I can say confidently that it does work. Well, we seem to be getting to the same point now. Let's see what happens. Yep, exactly the same thing at the same time. So, I don't see how this can be like an overheating problem. Unless like some operation suddenly causes it to overheat in a certain instruction, but that doesn't make sense to me really. How are we going to try and fix this? I think I may have a DVD with a Windows 10 ISO on. Maybe I can try that. Okay, I've taken the USB out. This is a DVD. This is actually Windows 10 32-bit rather than 64-bit. It's what I happen to have, actually. Let's see what this does. Okay. Well, it just restarted, yeah, <laughs> again, so there's obviously something with this it doesn't like. Once again, it started, I just want to see if it fails at the same point it did last time. Yeah, there we go. Let's see if we have a RAM test program on here. Okay. I've just connected this to my HDMI capture card as well, but it doesn't give an image for some reason on the HDMI. So we kind of stuck with doing it this way. Okay, let's see what's on the USB. Utilities menu. Oh, memory test. Okay. Hmm. Let's try this.
I'll just try the capture card, see if it is working. Nope. Okay. Let's see what this does. Well, that's just about finished, guys. So it took 47 minutes. Okay. The machine hasn't crashed or reset, so it certainly hasn't overheated while it was running the RAM test. But having said that, it didn't look like an overheating problem to start off with. Okay. Oh. Well, unless it resets properly at the end of the test like it was supposed to do that it just stopped uh, that's interesting i have to say okay so i have a linux usb in this is arch linux okay machines powering on arch linux and we will just tell it to install And it reset, okay. So it won't install Linux either. I had a look online and these machines came with Windows 7 originally, so here is an original Windows 7 disk. I don't think this will make the slightest difference, but I'll have a quick look. Let's see what it thinks of this. I think it's just reset. I've taken the cover off the back so we can see there's two dims in here. I can take those out. I mean there's also a Wi-Fi adapter. I can take that out actually although I doubt that's anything to do with the problem. I'm not sure if this has any RAM built on the motherboard or whether it just has these two but what I'll do is I'll take out one of them and try with just the other and then try with just this one in fact if I take them both out that will prove whether or not there's actually any other RAM on the motherboard okay so let's take them both out first if it doesn't come on we'll try with just one and then just the other one and see if one of those is faulty but it did pass a RAM test although it sort of gave up right at the end which is a bit strange okay this looks like it's a graphics card so I'm not sure if it'll work without that, but we can take that off as well and see whether it runs or whether it has any sort of onboard video as well as this. Okay, so let's try these few basic things first and see if that helps us at all. So without the dims fitted first, let's just see if this will even power up, if it has any on the motherboard or not, okay? Well, no, it just seems to shut back down again. No, the light is on, but it doesn't boot without the RAM fitted. Okay, let's try with just one of them. See what that does. I think I'll just try to boot Windows from my USB. We'll just check if it powers up first. Okay. Yep, 
Yeah, I have his picture on the screen. Let's put it where well, you can see it a little bit. Okay. This is easy to boot, by the way. I find this very handy for making utility disks to install Windows to test devices, RAM tests and such like, as you've seen. Okay. Well, it started to install as it did before with both of the DIMMs in. Just one in right now. Well, we're where we were before. Let's see. Yeah, get to this bit. And I think it's just reset. Yep, there. Okay. So we can try with the other strip of RAM. Here we go. Exactly the same point. So it's always the same point every time. We know that much. I'll just remove the one module just because I can. I don't for the life of me think it's going to make any difference. Okay. Handy thing. Okay, so once again. Yeah, same point. Okay. There's a few things I can say. This is my power supply, it's a 100 watt power supply. This is not the customer's power supply. The customer has the same problem with his power supply. It makes no difference. So I think we can discount that. There's no battery. The customer didn't have the battery for this. I don't know if he has it. Could the battery stop it from loading windows and crash like that? I don't know. I mean, I don't really see any reason why it would, but, you know, some strange things have happened, yeah? Let's see if we can take this thing out. Okay. The heat pipes are nicely warm all the way back. It's obviously conducting heat from both the processor and from here. Let's see if this comes out. doing the job okay does that actually yeah that seems to lift off one screw still in slightly now it's free yeah I'm assuming this is designed yeah it comes out okay so this is obviously the graphics card uh, does this thing work without the graphics card? In other words, has it got some sort of onboard video as well? Let's have a look. Turn on. No, it's just saying no graphics card. Well, as you would expect, a bit like a motherboard desktop. Okay, so we can clean the connector on this. I mean, it has plenty of heat sink compound, possibly a bit too much, but I'm not too bothered. It's not flooded with it. It has thermal pads on it. Okay. Works all right. Let's just give us a clean and put it back in. Okay, I've inserted that back in. It's screwed properly in place. That's how far it inserts. Okay. Let's try it. And once more. Well, I think it's three times across. 
or four times and it crashes on the next one. There, yeah, always the same point. Off, restart. One other thing I will just try, and this is out of interest more than anything else. I have a hard drive which has a Linux installation on it already installed. I just want to see if this machine can actually boot it. Okay. In fact, I have one with Linux on. This is my graphics card memory tester. And this has Windows on. Yeah. Let's just see. So the Linux first. What does it do? Well, this is booted. I mean, it's into the actual memory test for graphics cards. But I don't believe this will go anywhere near as far back as these ones. Okay. Now, no, look at reset. It did the same thing, yeah. And my Windows 10 test drive. This ain't going to work, is it, guys? This ain't going to work. Let's see. Well, it doesn't seem to want to boot from this at all. I bet this is because this driver's UEFI. In fact, it is UEFI, and it can't boot from it. That's not unusual for this is a Core 2 Duo. I have the same problem if I try to boot a desktop motherboard with a Core 2. It won't even boot from this drive, so that's not strange. And there we have it, guys. So there's obviously something on this. Something's wrong somewhere that prevents it from loading an operating system, either Linux or Windows, you can't install Linux or Windows. I know the hard drive that came with it is good, but there again, you've seen problems with the other hard drive, the Linux one, so there's obviously something wrong. But the problem is, I don't believe you can actually diagnose and repair this fault. I mean, get my multimeter. Where should I probe? What should I measure? What should I test to find out what's wrong with this? Because if you know, you're better than me, yeah? Is there some sort of diagnostic software I can run that will tell me that this is faulty or that is faulty? Not that I know of, but I'm not a laptop expert. Maybe you guys are, okay? So, yeah, is there some sort of diagnostic we can run other than what I've already done so that will tell us what is wrong with it? Why does it always boot from that winter boot drive? I can boot from that and leave it sitting on the menu for hours. Yeah, it won't just go off. Only when I actually come to install the windows will it go off or whatever happened at the end of the RAM test. Yeah. In my opinion, this isn't a proper fault. Yeah. Well, obviously it's faulty, but it's not a proper fault. I could get another battery. But then the customer has to pay for a battery, and I have no idea whether it will fix it or not. Quite probably won't. I could see if we could get another one of those graphics cards for it. I think that's more likely to fix it, actually. Maybe some sort of graphics problem. But, again, if we go to the expense of it, if we can even get one, will it fix it? I don't know. He has to make that decision, pay or not, yeah. Okay, so that one, guys, is over to you. Something to think about over this weekend. If there are other things you'd like to see me test on this, let me know and I'll do it after the weekend. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you like thinking about these sort of problems. Maybe I will have a 4 a.m. moment. Who knows? In the meantime, I'll just say I'm looking forward to seeing you all again soon on another Learning Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.